Hi, welcome to River Reflections. This program is brought to you by the church that you just saw, Grand Rapids River of Life Ministries. My husband Robert and I are the pastors of that church. And before I start on this time, I'm looking forward to interviewing someone special. I first want to say you are always welcome to visit River of Life. If you don't have a home church, you might want to consider making River your home church after you visit a few times and you get a word from the Holy Spirit, if that's where you belong. You know, the Lord has a way of bringing us to the exact place we need to be for however long we need to be there. And you're free to check out River. We'd love to see you. If you're a student just coming in from another state, we would love to serve as your home away from home for however long you're here. Just check us out. If you like small, interactive, you'll love us. If you want to be in a church where you feel like you're sitting in a theater and people stay on their side of the stage and you're, on, you're in your seat, then I'm going to guess you're not going to be too crazy about coming to River of Life because we will greet you. And if you come a whole bunch of times, we will notice when you're not coming. We just we love people and we want to be a home to people. And if that's what you're looking for, I think you'd love River. Well, tonight, what is so special to me is that I have my niece here with me, Gypsy Meadows. I actually knew her when she was yet in her mother's <laughs> womb, <laughs> so to speak. Yes, you did. I knew her, well, her mother's my sister. She's with Jesus right now. And I remember your mom and dad's romance. They were crazy in love. <laughs> I remember their first old. apartment on the northeast side. And I remember when you started to make her tummy big. At the same time that your tummy was growing, <laughs> My tummy right? was big at the same time. Yes, exactly. I have a son, E.G., who's like four days. Gypsy managed to slip through four days ahead of time. <laughs> I've always been competitive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you won that one. You I won did. that one. <laughs> E.G. won the left brain computer yes, programmer one, yeah, and did. she's more of a the creative, free, free creative, artsy <laughs> kind of person. But that's a good combo. Mm -hmm. And they used to be actually it used to be that Gypsy and E.G. were all one word yeah. for years. Gypsy and E.G. Gypsy and E.G. We were joined at the hip. <laughs> they were joined. We went all over the place. We went to an awful lot of long concerts. Your <laughs> mom and I with you kids on the ground. Those were some special times. They really were. But I watched her grow up. I remember when she was about three, four. She had her little flannel <laughs> board. I, I think I have a picture of this. Really? She's in our living room. We all lived together for a short, brief time. And she was pointing out her story that she was telling us on the <laughs> flannel board. And she was doing a really good job of it. Wow. So now, I, you Talented don't remember that, do you? Was that the no, Hermitage? No, I don't remember. The that. Hermitage <laughs> House. There you were. And you were sincere <laughs> as you could be. <laughs> good public speaker. Well, it was a good practice for now my work yeah, at orphanages. Yeah, there you go. And that's now, what we're going to talk about. Yeah. That's why I asked so. her to come so I could interview her. Because she has a uh, international ministry now. She actually lives in California. She's here visiting in mm -hmm. Michigan. But she had a dream of working with orphanages. And some of that has branched out into other areas. But we'll start with that. And when we were talking about this ahead of time, I realized that some of the life lessons she was saying, and I assume she realized she was saying them while she was saying them, I realized I want other people to hear too. Because listen carefully to the desire of the heart and how God hears that desire mm -hmm. and starts to open doors for that desire to be fleshed out. That excited me. So now I'm actually going to give you the floor <laughs> so that you can explain to the nice people out there uh -huh. <laughs> about how did this, you know, you were in India just a few months ago. Yeah, month? I just got back a month ago. A month ago. For the month of April, I was in India visiting schools and orphanages. Yeah, but let's start at the beginning. Worked the vision ten years. from the yeah. beginning. That's ten years now. What? Yeah. What? Okay, so you don't know of anything for sure how this is going to flush out, but you know you want to work with orphanages. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I knew that when I was about uh, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. I just God lo led me into a really close relationship with Him. Um, mm -hmm. It was what I called a friendship, mm -hmm. and um, it was. It was before people were really talking about having an intimate relationship with God. It was mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit taught me how to have a relationship one-on-one. -on -one. 
And um, through that, I definitely understood that I had a calling on my life, mm -hmm. and, um, and it was very different from what everyone thought I would be. What did they think? Everyone thought, and I thought, that because I was always the top of my class, you know, mm -hmm. um, very school smart. came easy. Always, yeah. So I thought I would do something significant, like a doctor or a lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, something with a nice title. Mm -hmm. um, and when God called me to, at that time, I called it being a missionary. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know about the five-fold ministry mm -hmm. or anything, mm -hmm. you know. I just thought I was a missionary. Um, but when God called me, um, I knew that I was supposed to take care of orphans. Mm -hmm. That just was, you know, children who didn't have parents, I knew was something that would be part of that calling. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and also just really wanting people to know him the way I knew him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, that was how it started, just at 16, kind of uh, going off the path of, you know, always the just The professional caring, yeah, aspiration. Always, right, always yeah. being that, you know, academic person mm -hmm. to being um, spiritually led. Mm -hmm. What was your first time you ever got involved in missions? Well, my... Um, I. During that time, I did a lot of reading about missionaries, mm -hmm. and a lot of the books that I happened to read were about missionaries to China. Uh -huh. And so that kind of put in me a desire to go to China. It's you know, just what I was exposed to and what mm -hmm. I knew, and it was very closed back then, a lot of persecution. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it goes on today, we just don't hear as much about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that's, so that's where I felt I had a calling to China and a calling to help orphans. Mm -hmm. So the first time that um, someone said, hey, I have, uh, my parents are sending a trip to China. And they said, we know Gypsy is interested in China, would she like to go? And so I, I said, yeah, I wanna go. My parents sent me, um, but the, the catch was that it was a singing trip um, and I did not enjoy choir at all. <laughs> it wasn't that my thing. Singing wasn't my thing. But I would do anything just to get there. Mm -hmm. And so... So you sang. So I had to sing. For <laughs> 30 days I spent with all these choir people. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I gritted my teeth through all the practicing and all the arguing about this note or that harmony. And, uh -huh. You know, um, but uh -huh. I, was, I was in a place that God had called me to. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's what mattered. So you so went to China. So I sort of went to China. You sort of went. What happened? Um, three days before we left was the Tiananmen Square Massacre, and that's mm -hmm. where um, a lot of college students were gunned down by the government of China for doing a demonstration. And so the country was closed to Americans. The, the American government said, you know, it's not safe to travel here. And because Hong Kong at that time was separate from China, mm -hmm. and so they happened to find um, a group of people in Hong Kong that were hosting mission groups. Mm -hmm. So I got to China almost. I was right next to China. So uh -huh. I ended up spending the month in Hong Kong. And um, we, it was really a significant time to be there because the people were mm -hmm. so emotional. There were memorials everywhere. Mm. So we did a lot of street evangelism. Um, in just Hong talking Kong. to people in Hong Kong. And, um, and so that's how I got almost to China. We did end up taking a, a three-day trip at, towards the end into China. Oh. And we, um, we smuggled some Bibles in, which was the thing to do back then. That's fascinating. So that was fun. Were you scared? No, I wasn't. I, I was so naive then, nothing scared me. I okay. was just adventurous and I would do anything. Um, but yeah, they had like these, um, these dresses that the women would wear. You'd tuck the Bibles into all the pockets. Really? And then the men had like baggy clothes and you would uh -huh. try to, it was all like a game. It, I uh -huh. don't, even though it was illegal, it was the, the guards, if they caught you, because we're Americans, they uh -huh. would just um, kind of tell you, no, you can't bring that in. And it did would you get caught? I, I w did it in several times, and so I did get caught more often than not. Really? <laughs> and usually I would just, because I was young, I would just kind of flirt with them and say, oh, please, can I just bring in a few? And, you know, sometimes uh -huh. I'd get away with it, but most of the time I didn't. No, were they mean or no. just, no, you can't it was do just, it? No, you can't. Yeah. They, you know. But you got some in. I did get some in and that That's felt good. good. They yeah. say that that church is really growing in China. Yeah, I haven't kept up on a lot of the politics of China recently. Yeah. Um, I know there's still so much persecution and so much that we don't hear about. Um, but yeah, God has just continued to uh, reach people, yeah. you know. So then despite. you told me uh, before that you ended up not only doing that singing trip to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. but there was more ministry for Hong Kong, right? Later? Yeah, I ended up getting close with the family that we all stayed with. They mm -hmm. were like a host family. And so um, 
they asked me to come back the following year and to um, kind of an exchange for room and board. I would homeschool their two girls and then I got to work with their ministry. And mm -hmm. so and their ministry was Their ministry what? was, um, again, not related to China, mm -hmm. but that's what God does, you know? He just, but what'd they do? They, um, they ministered in the Vietnamese refugee camps. So, at so that there were Vietnamese refugees in Hong Kong. Right. At that time, uh -huh. there were a lot of people, like the Syrian issue yeah, today, now, the Syrian yeah, refugees. Yeah. There were people um, fleeing Vietnam and landing in places like Hong Kong, mm -hmm. and they would put them in big internment camps. And they were really like prisons. So we really? would go in there. We had to go through security. Uh -huh. And then, um, so at, at 18 years of age, 18. having just graduated high school, I would teach English to a class of like 40 children from Vietnam. This tin, tin hut. They didn't speak any English. It was like 100 degrees in there. And every day I would just take the bus and the train and walk and I would pray, God, I don't know how to teach. I've never taught. I don't, how do I teach them? Oh, wait a minute. Don't you remember <laughs> what I told you? You're like three or four <laughs> standing by your flannel graph. See, don't God you remember? God uses everything. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, so he would just give, the Holy Spirit would give me ideas, uh -huh. and so, yeah, I had a, a great time. I developed relationships with them. I ended up being the, um, the person that all the, a lot of the camp people trusted. They would give me their grocery lists. They would, things oh. like medicines or eyeglasses or baby so you'd bottles. So go get them for them. They would give me a list and the money, and I would go mm -hmm. out and get them and bring them back the next time. Ah. And, you know, I was able to, you know, um, do evangelism and talk to people Tell me about, about that. Jesus. How did that door open up at all in any place, manner, or form in that camp? How did that door open? Well, considering that God can use me, that I'm like the worst evangelist in the world because I'm, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not um, aggressive. Like I, I really just like people as they are. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not into changing their beliefs, but I do believe that. God, I couldn't be, I couldn't have survived life without God. And uh -huh. his rela my relationship with him is crucial to where I am today. And so I mm -hmm. want people to have that if they want it. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like the opposite of being an evangelist. <laughs> it's like being a subtle, Kind of a laid quiet, back. If you yeah, want it, you just, can have it, I'll tell right, you. Right, if you're interested, I'll tell you. Did it work? And it, yeah, there was this, uh, the one, I mean, there, was, there were several times that people asked me to pray for them to accept Jesus. But the time that I remember most was, um, this interpreter that I had used throughout the, the whole time, he mm -hmm. would, um, I would teach the class and he would be there to interpret. Mm -hmm. And um, and so he knew me, you mm -hmm. know, he knew me well. We spent a lot of time together. and But I never talked to him about God. And then at the very end, he started asking me questions. Mm -hmm. And then he asked, will you pray for me to mm -hmm. um, receive Jesus? And, and I just felt like if there was, if I spent that whole time there just for him, Mm -hmm. but that was just fine that that mm -hmm. you know that mm -hmm. was to me that was just really neat it was just mm -hmm. i knew that, that, that now this was a he, hong kong guy or a vietnamese he guy he was a vietnamese refugee really? he okay. had no other better status than anyone else he was a prisoner in there really yeah i mean not prisoner but you know couldn't mm -hmm. they can't leave mm -hmm. um but yeah he um he just you know had a became and it was softened. genuine he became yeah, a christian he, he, he's the one that asked me, you know, and, uh -huh. and just... Do you still at all uh, in touch with this guy? No, not? I don't have in touch with anybody there because they were in transition. They didn't have an address. Yeah, There was oh, no Facebook right. back then. And you were 18. That <laughs> was, was a long 18. time ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's just, I just love the way that God will use you. You can go all the way across the world, you know, for three months long and maybe there's just one person that God mm -hmm. has on his mind. But if you're willing, and mm -hmm. you listen, you know, that could be that one person that mm -hmm. God wants to touch. Yeah. And that's kind of been the story of my life, you know, is just, just being little open. moments. You got yeah. the right name, Gypsy. Yes. <laughs> Wherever, yes. whenever. You know, I'm going to insert this story because it fits right here of somebody that has ministered at our church. She's in heaven now. Her name was June Lewis, and she's written books. She was a friend. And the Lord told her one day to go to Tiananmen Square. Mm. She knew nobody. She mm. didn't know. The Lord said, take your tapes. She had English tapes. She was a good teacher. And she did. And the Lord had her in Tiananmen Square. And some young English-speaking student sat next to her. She told him about, God told her to come here. And she had some teaching tapes. And this guy turned out to be a student in the university who worked in the tape department 
he wow. translated her teachings into what would that be Mandarin or mm -hmm, something probably and he began to share her tapes she did not know when she left the United States exactly how God was gonna mm -hmm. go from A to B which is part of the things I said in the introduction to your testimony of of the desire in your heart hearing God saying yes going in that direction right and then lo and behold God yeah. connects you and who knows what that guy from the camp the Vietnamese man who knows who he turned around in touch right. and who they turned around in touch mm -hmm. you just say here I am use yes. me yeah and and by you being willing to be the grocery go-to medicine go-to person it right. develops a respect a trust um, see your love mm -hmm. you know and that you really cared right yeah yeah you're probably right I mean it's yeah God's people like are that. watching us and yeah you know um, yeah that's our love that speaks yeah and it's God's love working through us right because we're saying yes sir mm -hmm. but what we're, what we're saying yes sir to has to do with him trying to manifest his love through us to others to us too he loves us right but he's using us as a conduit for everybody else as well so I've gotten to that point like drop me anywhere where you want me and then yeah. I'll just trust you're gonna open doors mm -hmm. and and use me kind of thing that's fun it's really fun it is fun. I love serving God in that way like when I get on the plane and it's just a trip of me and him yeah I'm just obeying whatever he says I just know mm -hmm. that I'm gonna see his provision and his little miracles all throughout yeah it's you know? fun it's, it's fun yeah yeah but we left you in Hong Kong ministering to Vietnamese mm -hmm. and you were 18 and now you're 44 Mm -hmm. Why do I know that? <laughs> E.G., my yes. son, same age. Yeah. Yes. And you're that's a long time ago. supposed to say my age out on television. I'm going to be 70 this year, so <laughs> she's a baby. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say your age. I don't know. It's well, okay. It's out there now. I'm, yeah, I am late. very, uh, I know women think like that. And I'm, that's another, remember That's we a California thing. I've been living the in The age thing? Now. Oh, the movie star bit? No one tells their uh, age. I just think it's. <laughs> Every age is to me a new adventure, and and when women don't want to say their age, I'm always thinking, why not? I know. I mean, I never get that. But I now that you've been outed, I've I, it's out you're there. out there. It's, it's out, out there, there now. There. It's out there now. Yep, there it is. See how beautiful she is. <laughs> <laughs> I actually said that to somebody. I said she's done. Look how beautiful she is. <laughs> Just a while ago. But anyway, that's a long time from 18 to. True. Whatever age you are, it yes. eludes me right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then what? Between here and there, you ended up going to India. How many times have you been there now? I've been to India 12 times. That's a lot of times. Yeah, it, especially since it's such a long trip. And it costs a lot. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, is, it is. But um, yeah, I've, I can't believe how many times I've been there. It actually feels natural to be there whereas oh, yeah. the first trip I couldn't wait to leave I was like yeah there's a sense of and I've been overseas a lot to all different countries and there's a sense in the beginning of I'm not safe till I get home in the United mm. States yeah and you hit the you're like you, you come back in the United States and you're like I didn't die there nobody killed me I didn't get kidnapped right. yeah well it's hard but to get out of our while, comfort zone yeah after you know? a while it, it, yeah. it is comfortable I, I know that transition but how did you get from we left you in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. You want to be used to God as a missionary. Right. Okay, what happened? So, I, that was my intention, was to continue working in Hong Kong and China. But then I got married. But wait a minute, you lived in Hong Kong for a while. I did, but well, I You're going to get there eventually? No, we're not going to oh, cover that? Oh, no, I now. lived in Hong Kong when I worked in the Vietnamese refugee camp. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was only there for three months. That's I, a long time. Yeah, it was as long as I could afford. I didn't know at the time that you could raise money. Oh. So for the whole summer before I went, I worked at factories. I worked odd jobs, temp jobs, uh -huh. until I had enough money to go. Uh -huh. And then I budgeted my time. And uh -huh. then I came home and I ran out of money. I did not know you could raise money to be a missionary. Man, so I could have told you that. <laughs> you didn't ask. <laughs> I, I was naive and I was willing. But yeah. God works everything out. So I came home. I was proposed to... I was told that I can't be a missionary and plan a wedding at the same time by my mother. Mommy, my yes. sister told you that? So, <laughs> so I stayed home for the next 12 years and, well, 10 years. So I was married for 10 years and yeah. then got divorced. 
And then I truly thought that my calling was done because I believed wholeheartedly that you were divorced. divorce was a no-no for, for a Christian and that meant I couldn't have a calling anymore. So You could have asked me about that one too. <laughs> Plus you could clearly see what I was doing and you knew my history. <laughs> well, you know, it's right? the way God, God yeah. already had things planned ahead of time to help me through that. Um, so, so That was the prevalent belief in our circles. Yeah, it was. It yeah. was. I mean, that was a time when, yeah, it wasn't accepted really. So, yeah. But when it, the call is so strong, my attitude has usually been, you know what, if I'm wrong in moving ahead, I'd rather be wrong in that than missing it. Mm -hmm. So, Well, yeah. and that's, you know, that's one of the, um, the things that I'm communicating to people now when I speak yeah. is um, that we are wholly human. We are wholly and we are completely human, mm -hmm. and that's how God uses us. Mm -hmm. And I Broken. thought that when I got divorced, that was the end of my holiness, mm -hmm. because my holiness de depended on my perfection, and I had done so good at being perfect up until then. <laughs> and now I had this thing that was bigger than me, that yeah. it was like the scarlet letter. And But nobody did that to you except your own head, right? Well, seriously, no, for I somebody, because nobody's done it to me. It would, it, like somebody asked me one time, would you be on my aglo board? <laughs> Esther King, she was a newscaster, she asked me. And the first thing I said to her, you do know I'm divorced, right? I would say in my church community at that time, you could not hold certain functions in the church if you were divorced, no. Mm. And so that was my world, and that, you know, it was That's a small what world. Got, yeah. Yes. In mm -hmm. fact, at my first interview, um, at a nonprofit organization, I confessed to the, my future boss that I was divorced and that might be a reason why he can't hire me. <laughs> yeah, see, same thing like I did to Esther, and Esther almost yes. laughed at me, and I'm like, oh. Right, so I was told that no, that's not a reason that they can't hire uh -huh. me. And so that was my first step back into my calling. That's good. Um, I mean, I, God had brought me privately into, um, back into my calling but that was in the closet. And now yeah. this was my first step professionally Open. back into my calling. Yeah, and beautiful. that was working on behalf of children. So mm -hmm. that's what started me on my path of where I am now. To India. To India, mm -hmm. yes. And you went for the organization you worked for at that time. Yeah, so about, for about seven years, I worked for an organization that developed Christian schools in developing countries. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was very good training for me. Yeah. Um, it, it got me involved right away internationally. and. Um, it also helped me understand the value of education because until then I just thought it was about um, teaching people about Jesus mm -hmm. and that was it. Mm -hmm. But this helped, it helped broaden my view that you know to really transform a person not only can you change their life through education but you can especially with your Christian education you can bring them to know about God throughout their mm -hmm. you know their entire um, time at school. Yes. yes. And. Um, so that, that, you know, it seems like a simple thing, but I, I didn't understand the value of it until I really was in it for a while. Well, actually, I, you know, it's actually I was the one that introduced your mom to the Christian community that you yes, grew I up Yes, I grew in. up in Christian schools. Yes. And it made a huge but, difference on how it turned out. Yes, but how I was raised in the Christian Reform community before I became open to the Pentecostal community, that I will give the Christian Reform that. The Calvinistic view has always been, all the time, exactly. everywhere, body, soul, and spirit. Right. And the Pentecostal background, for instance, that my husband came out of, those kids spent practically every night in church, and education right. was not looked upon as a primary value. Right. Church services were so emphasized that which is what I grew up. I grew up Pentecostal. Yeah. yeah. And then I worked for an organization that was Reformed or <laughs> Christian Reformed. So they were the ones that had the value. So I yeah, learned there it from you them. Go. I learned it from a new, a that whole other funny. denomination. That is funny. Yes. Yeah. So it's ironic when I think of my influence on Shelley and then mm -hmm. your resulting childhood, but then you go back into the Reform to find out what I knew all along and right. raised that way. Yes. That's funny. Yes. That is, I never put that together before <laughs> this moment. So they introduced you to India, so you got some favor and some contacts. We got three minutes left in this program, yes. and next week's program, people, is going to still be me interviewing Gypsy, so then you'll hear the you heard already some of the the journey mm -hmm. to becoming a missionary, but with a little broader view of helping physically as well as um, with salvation, mm -hmm. both, not 
only, but you know what, missionary, like again, the Christian Reform Church, the ministers that would come, some of them were actually medical doctors that they got their inroad through being right. servants to that community. And now some people go to dig wells, right. but then in the process, they'll have Bible studies. Well, and that's what Jesus did. Yeah. Jesus fed the people first and then he taught them spiritually. Yeah. He didn't let them, oh, and he healed their bodies. Yeah, he, he cared about all yes. of them, not just the word. And well, a key to that too is that we all find out what our, if you go as a team and you got this one that does the teeth mm -hmm. and this one that does the groceries and then this one knows Bible stories or whatever. If you go as a team, then we can still um, do our specialty but still meet all the needs. I think teams are kind of fun too. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And next program, we'll talk some about, you mentioned to me, which we have, we're not going to be able to talk about in this program, but the whole gardening thing and then even bringing in university students mm -hmm. on that. But it's an inroad to people's yes. hearts and lives if we care about their physical being. And when we're talking India, you're probably talking huge, huge physical need. need. Yes. Yeah. And you love it there? I love the people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't necessarily the, love the country the is in chaos and all, probably always will be, but it's a beautiful country and, it, and I really love the people. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm, I'm very privileged that I get to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So since you have left the organization and now have your own ministry, India's... India's Ch Children. Children, is the name India's of our Children. Organization. Um, have you, uh, has your range of contacts greatly expanded? since then within india yeah yes good yes. i figured that would happen yes. the lord would start to open up new fresh oh, doors yes. yeah there's been a lot of favor every time i go and a lot of new connections and when i go i just listen like i you know i i make a ticket and i show up but i don't make an agenda i just listen to how god leads mm -hmm. and it's amazing the people he'll put me in touch with and the doors will open and we'll talk about that yes. in the next program okay sounds yeah. good well, the Lord commanded us, go ye, and that's what Gypsy has done. She's gone. When the Lord says go, she raised the money to get on the airplane and go where the Lord told her to go, starting with China slash Hong Kong, and eventually working with an organization, introduced her to India. And on the next program, you'll hear more about the India ministry. God bless you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this show.